All right, folks, so in, in the past week, there's been um, two JUTC bus fires, but the company is telling citizens that there's no need to worry. Well, I won't speak for the company because we have to quench the flames. JUTC's corporate communications manager, Mr. Cecil Thompson, deputy managing director in charge of operations, the man with the greatest name in the world, Neville. <laughs> the name I've got to call him last day. Mr. Neville Francis, good morning to you both. Thank you. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. <laughs> um, so you guys have already put out something to say there's no need to, to worry. But yes. first, what caused both fires? Let's go with the first one. What caused that? Well, put it this way. Um, as it is now, the, that fire is under investigation. We have to be very thorough in how we deal with situations like this because we want the findings to inform us going forward. Okay. There's, um, as it relates to the second fire, right. which was in Alpha Tree, it's a, every, every finger is pointing to an arson, arson because so we arson. arson, yes, work of an arsonist, given that um, the fire was not started in the, the engine compartment. The engine compartment have some sensors which trigger um, the information on the computer in front of the driver. That okay. certainly was not the case. Okay. People just were in the bus and they ball out fire. The bus was moving, by the way? Yes, at the time, yes. Oh, so the fire was on the outside? No, the fire started actually in the bus itself. That was apparently was lit, lit in, the, in, the, in the bus so itself. So if you, if you are right, for whatever reason, are you suggesting that there was someone in the bus or just in the bus and just started a fire in the yeah, bus? Yes, that is likely. That is where the investigation Ooh. is pointing. <sighs> well, let's just say So that, we're ruling out mechanical issues. Yes. I'm, I'm hearing you. Um, and earlier we were talking about what you don't take onto the bus. Yes. Because, um, I mean, until the investigations prove, prove me wrong, Cecil, it, it could also be carelessness. Somebody could probably be in the bus. Pretty much so, Jalia. The yeah. truth of the matter is that we've had from time to time persons coming on the bus tampering with the equipment. I mean, in the last case of a stabbing incident, for example, we had a man who came on the bus because he was told not to open the window. He stabbed the driver, but that's a separate issue. But we've had persons who come on the bus, they eat on the bus, they do abs the things that you advise them not to do. And when you tell them not to do these things, then it, it creates these kinds of, of problems. Wow. Um, well, with respect. It's, it's, I'm sorry to jump in, but you say it's another issue. But him tell a man, say he can't open the window and the man stab him. Right. So, so, in, April, <laughs> so in April of this, this year, we've had two stabbing incidents, one of which, well, both of them happened in the halfway tree area. Okay. And uh, the last of them, or the last incident, was in late April where a man came on the bus and was telling the driver that the, the AC was too cold. Uh, the driver indicated that, you know, you can't open the window. He proceeded to open the window. He was advised not to open the window. Um, soon he started demanding his fare, and the driver was in the process of, of preparing his fare when he came up to the driver and slashed him in the face. He ran off. The driver, who I, 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 I would call him a hero and, and courageous, ran after him. Many of us would be stunned at that. You're slashed in the face. And he ran after him, caught him on Eastwood Park Road. Luckily for us, the police was in the vicinity and he was oh, handed over to the police. Said, sorry to jump in. But right. Whew. So you, both fires are still under investigation. Both yeah. fires are under investigation. With this latest incident, though, the police is on board with this particular one. Or managing director Paul Abrams was on site. And the information that he's received from the police is that when they checked the engine compartment, there was no tampering, there was no damage. So as Mr. Francis has indicated, this is not uh, a fire that emanated from the engine compartment. In addition to which, though, had that fire started in the engine compartment, the, the dashboard of the driver would have lit up yeah, because so all our buses so. are computerized. Mm -hmm. hmm. Both buses damaged beyond repair or no? Mr. Yeah, Francis? Beyond, yeah, beyond repair, yes, certainly. So you just write off those two buses? Well, yes. The one in Alpha Tree, certainly the engine and the transmission, we can still use both. But for the shell, the, um, that certainly um, is beyond repair. What kind of maintenance schedule do you have? You know, um, JUTC has a very comprehensive maintenance schedule. Mm -hmm. We have a pre fire prevention schedule that is a part of a wider um, preventative maintenance program. And in fact, we have several controls in place. For example, we on a daily basis have to do what you call valve adjustment. 
which speaks to making sure that the valves are in harmony with each other, given that the, the heat that generate at the back of the, of the bus, we have to do um, coolant density tests to make sure that the coolant is the right density to, to, to drive that heat. We do things like um, back pressure testing. We do things like engine washing, um, uh, undercarriage washing, very comprehensive. To the extent, the fact that we view this thing so seriously, every week, every maintenance manager have to go before the managing director and the DMD to speak to those targets because we take it very serious. Who is the DMD? DMD. The DMD um, Brown. No, DMD mean what? Deputy, Deputy, Deputy Managing Manager. Director okay. of Maintenance. Right. It's a very comprehensive program and you can't miss those targets. That is the extent of the seriousness that we have fixed to the maintenance. Yeah. Mr. Thoms, um, when things like these happen, you hear all kind of things coming from all kind of places. So some people say the fleet old, and that's why you have to the fire them and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Speak to me, please, about that. Are we, where are we Absolutely, to? Neville. The truth is, uh, the, the fleet is aging and there is need for replenishment. The fact, though, is that, as Neville pointed out, that there is a rigorous maintenance schedule in place. Um, about approximately 10 buses per depot uh, are, are, are daily. maintained and serviced yeah, every, and that's an average that's of an 10 average, buses yes. at, at every depot. Um, we are challenged. We are not a perfect company and there will be problems. And just to point out that we're talking about bus fires here, but even in developed countries in the great USA, yeah. um, they too have bus fires and we're not making light of the situation. Yeah. We know the concerns of people, but we're asking and we appreciate those concerns. Yeah. But Aging means what? Aging means that these buses are between 10 and 15 years old. And the truth is that what we're seeking to do now with a new program that we're, we're embarking on is a program of refurbishing the buses. So normally uh, what currently obtains is that these buses come to the end of their life after about 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. The refurbishing program that we're putting in place will extend the life of the bus to an, an additional 10 years or so. So we get about 20 years out of it. So what I'm hearing is Passengers shouldn't be too concerned about their own safety based on these two fires. That's what you're saying to me. Certainly. And, you know, I want to extend on a point that was made by um, Mr. Tessa Toms. You know, um, Metro Bus Company in the USA, um, First World, um, Howl Resources and Technology, they had several fires last year. We only had one. And that speaks to the level of a maintenance program that we have in place. Not that we are making a defense, because one fire is one too much. Yeah. But that speaks to where we are. Our mechanics and technicians are being sought, uh, have, have been um, uh, recruited by the Canada and Europe. Mm. You know, that is where we are. Right. We have a very good um, set of me me uh, me mechanics and, and technicians. Yep. I want to go back to something that Mr. Tom said about the aging thing. And you said usually it's about 10 years. About 10 years, yes. But now you're trying to get 20 years out Absolutely, of it. Absolutely, yes. Um, so we don't get new buses after 10, 12 years? Well, in this particular, with our current arrangement with the IMF uh, precludes us from, from getting additional buses. But I think that is something that we're advocating for. I know that our managing director has uh, been in dialogue with the, our, our lead minister, Honorable Robert Montague, on this. And it is something on the table. And if you, what you do with the bus then? So if you pull them out of service, what happened what, what to them after you pull them out? Them just sit down there? After I said 12 years old, what are you doing them? No, we have a, we have a plan um, refurbished program that is currently underway, which we intend to um, get some additional bus from that program into operation. So that is something that we're working on right now as we speak. What happens when, when, when a bus is on fire, it pulls one of your fleets out of the system? How do you respond to make sure that people use that route and inconvenience because it's one less bus? And, and all of those things. You pull from somewhere else? Yeah, we have several operational control okay. that drive our business processes. Um, you can reroute. Mm -hmm. You can replace that bus by bus that are actually in the depot, in the grid, that are ready to go on the road. So yes, this is something that we have been um, in control it's of. It's thought through. Yes. Um, so, so I, you know, because I'm listening to some of the things that you said have happened on the bus. First time, those things would never <laughs> happen on a bus. Yeah. So as society changes and things change, um, do you also change some of the, the, the SOPs, the standard operating? Because now 
do you make sure that there's a fire extinguisher on a bus oh, absolutely. and how they respond I mean, to fires uh, since now we have more than one? Absolutely. Right. And, and daily, this is also the point as well. When the, when the, the, the driver uh, in, the, in the incident on Tuesday uh, sought to use the fire extinguisher, the, the, the fire inflamed the bus rather quickly and so he didn't get an opportunity to, to out, okay. out the blaze. But there's one on board of all, all there's buses? There's a fire extinguisher on okay. all our units. And as a passenger, do I know exactly what to do in case of something like that? Do I know which door, well, I guess I have to run to the door that the fire... Well, the drivers are trained in this particular instance to marshal what happened when the fire, when he was alerted that there was a fire, he quickly disembarked all the passengers on board, and like I said, he tried to grab the fire extinguisher, but the fire got the better of him. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I want to say as well is in, with respect to standard operating procedure and perhaps even public uh, campaigns is that we have found it necessary to put this critical messages on radio, you know, telling and informing persons of the things that they can and can't do. Mm. As you, you I, I don't know if I should put this rather controversial issue on the table, but the matter of preaching, for example, on our buses, we have been at pains to tell people that, listen, please don't do that, because what you're doing is invading another person's right to a comfortable ride, but it still happens. We've put those messages on radio. We've also placed on radio messages about if you see a pregnant woman standing in a bus, give them the seed. Give her the seed. But we, we, our culture is, I suppose, changing, evolving uh, yeah, uh, for the worse. For you to have to, uh, to say, give a pregnant woman a seed. We're in trouble. Yeah. Hmm. We're in trouble. All right, buses? gentlemen. Yes, yeah, certainly. We have, um, we have a fleet size of about 470. Um, and of course, on a daily basis, we are down to anywhere between 400 and 390. And that is sufficient to move the Don't county. Because what? Problems with the others? No, um, you have to understand that from time to time, you will have problems developing with these okay. buses, and they are, they are take note and maintain. One of the things that I said before, we, the, this maintenance program is very comprehensive. Yep. And because we always um, um, strive to ensure that Passenger safety is utmost. We make certain that those buses are properly All right. maintained. All right. Well, the great news of all of this, no one got hurt. I'm sorry Absolutely. about the buses, yes. but um, I guess we, that's, that's the biggest thing. Thanks for coming.